Does MUND work and the origin of inertia? MUND is the non-quantum modification to gravity that has captivated the most attention from the physics community since Einstein's general relativity. Modified Newtonian dynamics or Milgromian dynamics was first proposed in 1981 by Milgram as a modification to inertia or to gravity. It was explicitly constructed to obtain flat galactic rotation curves to explain the dark matter observations in galaxies. In essence, MUND modifies gravity in a certain low acceleration regime through a fundamental constant of acceleration, also referred to as an acceleration scale constant or Hubble acceleration, in a way in which Newtonian gravity transitions from an inverse square law to a simpler inverse law through an interpolating function dependent on the true acceleration and the acceleration constant. Evidence in favor of MUND, in contrast to physical dark matter, is found in several observations. Galactic rotation curves exhibit no mass discrepancy at their interior, which is very difficult to explain with physical dark matter, which should clump together and exist in larger amounts in the center of galaxies. Of course, one could hypnotize any desired particular distribution of physical dark matter to fit observations, since it is not observable. MUND fits the data with a single free parameter, its acceleration constant, in contrast to physical dark matter models, which have many more. It is a fact that, if one wants to modify gravity to explain dark matter in rotation curves, this modification must always departure from Newtonian gravity at a particular acceleration scale. This is always correct and it is the true great achievement of MUND without even stating how must gravity behave beyond this scale apart from being stronger because there are multiple choices for its interpolating function in the original MUND proposal, different interpretations such as modified inertia or just modified gravity and different field models such as scalar, vector or tensor fields for a more fundamental theory of MUND. The mass discrepancy in galaxies always appears at lower accelerations than a particular threshold value. This correlation between acceleration and mass discrepancy should not be expected to arise naturally with physical dark matter. The Tully-Fisher relationship is an observational correlation between the mass of luminosity of a galaxy and its rotational velocity, which Mond's formulation results in, but there is no reason why physical dark matter should result in such correlation. Moreover, Mons explains the Rinzos rule, by which features in the baryonic mass distribution and features in the rotation curve are strongly correlated. Again, there is no reason by which physical dark matter should result in this correlation. For both of these cases, physical dark matter, which would account for most of the matter in galaxies, should clump by its own gravity, leading to deviations from these relationships. Although a Tully-Fisher relationship was known for certain type of galaxies before Milgram worked out MUND, MUND predicted this relationship for all galaxy types after its formulation. There are many more indications that support MUND, such as observed flat rotation curves extending beyond the supposed dark matter halo, tidal dwarf galaxy exhibiting dark matter effects that shouldn't exist according to physical dark matter models, early galaxy formation as observed by the James Webb Telescope and many more. Results for binary system tests are inconclusive at this present date, 2024. It is often claimed that MUNS has been falsified and it's wrong because it does not explain galaxy cluster dynamics or the evidence of dark matter in the CMB at the early universe. Firstly, one must understand MUND as an effective theory, the same way Newtonian gravity or gravito-electromagnetism or linearized gravity is an effective theory or approximation of general relativity. We know this is the case for sure, since the original MUND formulation is not only non-relativistic, but also fails to satisfy basic conservation laws. But theories which satisfy conservation laws that result in MUND's approximation can be built. Examples are AQUAL and TVS. In other words, a more fundamental theory of modified gravity, 
Thundermond must reduce to Mond as an approximation in the galaxy regime, while its complete formulation must explain galaxy cluster dynamics if physical dark matter does not exist, a topic of the CMB will discuss later. Since Mons alleviates the mass luminosity discrepancies in galaxy cluster dynamics from a factor of 5 or 6 to a 2 or 3, and by using Mons the discrepancy decreases with increasing distance from the center of the clusters, some Mons supporters suggest that a physical form of dark matter could exist in these systems. This physical dark matter could explain the evidence for dark matter in the early universe from the CMB. While some may think that there is no point to using MOND to explain some dark matter observations and physical dark matter to explain other dark matter observations, not only this could be true, but it is more reasonable than to propose physical dark matter for the case of individual galaxies, where the Caspi halo problem shows that by using Newtonian gravity, the mass discrepancy increases with distances far away from the galactic center because physical dark matter should concentrate more in both galaxy centers and cluster centers. Dark matter should clump by gravity with higher densities where there is more baryonic matter and this works in galaxy clusters considering that month holds, but not within galaxies. While this could be a solution to the CMB, the effects of dark matter in the early universe could also be explained by the fact that most attempts to construct a fundament theory rely on additional or extra fields, which must be accompanied by a particle related to that field according to quantum field theory, which could be the physical dark matter particle of the CMB power spectrum. A varying acceleration constant in MONS could also solve early universe structure formation, which is claimed to be due to physical dark matter. If one prefers to think that galaxy clusters are empty of physical dark matter, then the original Mond formulation must be modified and gravity should be even stronger for these systems than in Mond. One may even think that a Thunder Mond theory should take into account this modification of Mond and that Mond is just an approximation, for instance, in which extra terms or higher order terms are missing. It was Beckenstein who, in the same way that Milgram identified the difference between the solar system and the outer part of galaxies as the latter having lower gravitational field intensities or accelerations than the first, identified that the interior of galaxy clusters has deeper potential wells than the solar system or individual galaxies. He proposed an AQUAL scale dependent critical acceleration based on potential and a constant of speed for this deviation from standard month. This means that month, which is based on gravitational field intensities, may be missing a correction or a term based on gravitational potentials which fundament could contain. The main troublesome one encounters with this idea is that if a correction to month is based on the depth of potential wells, it must yield Newtonian gravity for neutron stars, which have even deeper potential wells than clusters. This could be in principle solved if Fundament only differentiates from Mand in the low acceleration regime, which is the case for galaxy clusters but not for neutron stars. The collision of two clusters, named the bullet cluster, is usually portrayed as evidence against Mand because the mass discrepancies in the system inferred from weak lensing analysis of background galaxies do not appear where the observed bulk of most baryons is, at the inner central gas. But Mand does not predict that the discrepancies must be where baryons are. Instead, it predicts that the discrepancies must be where accelerations are small, which is usually found far away from the observed baryonic bulks. Beckenstein's scale-dependent critical acceleration violates Newton's shell theorem. The gravitational field at the surrounding surface does not fix uniquely the mass within it, but matter elsewhere can influence the result, which could solve the bullet's cluster dynamics. In this cluster, the problem is that there is gravitational field whose sources do not seem to be inside, but outside the gravitational field. Still, standard month does not explain the bullet cluster, as it doesn't fully explain other galaxy clusters colliding or not. The bullet cluster not only doesn't rule out modified gravity or a fundament theory, but it is also difficult to favor physical dark matter 
due to the difficulties to model the dynamical system with dark matter. Milgram himself often supported the idea of Mund as modifying inertia instead of gravity, although the latter might seem simpler or less of a sin to do. Newtonian inertia was already modified by special relativity, and there are many more examples in physics of modified, acquired or effective inertia observations. Could there be a modified theory of inertia leading to Mund? Many other attempts to modify gravity, such as Brand Sticke theory, were motivated and phenomenologically grounded on Mach's principle. We will explain the relationship between modified inertia theories with Mach's principle and Mund in a future video.